Hi, hi. Well, we had a little glitch there. I forgot to have the camera turned just the right way. It was turned, but it wasn't, you know, it, it, this just, yeah. Anyways, welcome to Wednesday Whimsy. I'm Linda and Joe is monitoring the comments tonight. Say hi, Joe. Hi, everyone. <laughs> just what he wants to do is he put on the spot, right? So, um, I actually had a little bit more of a description in the first time I tried to pop on here. And what we're doing tonight is, um, you know, you ever have these things around your house and you're like, you know, you have all this lovely IOD product, right? And what are you gonna do with it? You have these little parts and these little pieces. And hey, Suzanne, how you doing, Michigander? And you, you don't know what to do with maybe the parts of the pieces and maybe you have something laying around and you're like oh maybe i'm going to toss it out the next yard sale or you know god maybe i'll just give it away or throw it out don't do that don't do that so i want joe oh that's what we need to do joe is get the picture post the picture in the comment of how this whole project started <laughs> Here's the picture. so um click on the comment and and can you add a, a photograph and then choose the picture yay hey pat how are you how are you i don't know about you guys out in michigan and illinois but oh my god like the weather here in in cape cod has like been phenomenal it was i don't know what the temp was today but it felt like spring thank you suzanne thank you so much um, but anyways, um, Joe is going to be posting the picture and what this was is this was a, really a pretty sad little, I went shopping in my little, I have a little hallway of vintage finds. I know, right? We're going to do molds tonight, James. Wait till you see this. So I've got this, I have a little bit of primer on here. Um, hopefully it's enough. Um, I haven't really done the, like a coated metal before. So this is kind of an experiment for me. Um, otherwise, I would have done a nice metal primer, um, but I think this is going to be enough for this piece. And I just basically took the welding and I just like some tin snips and some like a chisel and a hammer and I got that sucker snapped off. And it does have a little bit of texture, but I'm not too worried about it. When we're going to get this painted and we're going to have molds all over it, there's going to be a lot going on. So I'm not worried about these little ridges for the fins. And so this was sitting on an ugly little black sand, no longer. <laughs> and this was a lovely frame from who knows where. I think we got it off of the ground somewhere in the rain, nonetheless. And it had this um, dark and dingy, kind of a brown burgundy velvet. You know that, that stuff in the old frames? That's what this was. And I really tried to do like a nice um, wash of paint. I've been coming in and um and i haven't been feeling well i hate to say that so we've been coming in and i just all i've been doing is putting like a coat of paint on the on the, the velvet and it just wasn't working so believe it or not today I came in first thing i did is i uh, got the heat gun out yanked off that velvet so oh no burr oh sorry suzanne it's really not, oh 19 celsius oh my gosh so um, and it did have a couple gouges because the heat gun, I didn't get it hot enough and it, the, the, the velvet backing was actually pulling some of the, um, the wood out. And even though I liked some of the texture, um, I did do a little fill. And then we did like a primer and we have the coat of the aqua. And then I went over, it did have the, the gold frame, but um, in the prep, um, which I did do like a light sand and I cleaned it. Um, a little bit of the, too much of the red that was behind the, the, the gold uh, came through and there's still a little bit I don't know if you can see there's there's a lot going on in this and I and I want that there's actually a little bit of rose gold in here there's the bright gold there's the original gold a little bit of the red coming through and then I went ahead and wiped a little bit of the gold into the turquoise color or the aqua whatever we're gonna call it hey Australia so Queensland, all right, we have family in um, Sydney area and I always forget the name of it when I'm put on the spot. But So Joe just posted um, our affiliate link to buy the Iron Orchid Design merch. So like something like this, hey Paula, how are you doll? 
Um, so they're gonna, you can get like t-shirts with this design, you can get hats with this design, you can get the lovely like the Pavo stamp in a t-shirt, you can get some of the transfers in, the, in backpacks and totes, go check it out. Use that link that you see down below in the comments. And hi, <laughs> Paula says hi. And, uh, and then uh, we, get, we get a little bonus for you using that link. So, all right, so then I cut a piece of little Luan. Now we're back on subject here, because this is how my brain works. Um, we're back on subject. Cut a little piece of real thin Luan and primed it. Um, again, the de-wax shellac, uh, anyone who knows, uh, we, we're working with the, uh, the products. If you follow us on our pages or any of our videos, we use the de-wax shellac. Um, and then I just did a real wash of colors on here to assimilate a water background. Now I'm on the fence as whether to um, add, I'm thinking about adding maybe some frond stamps if we get time to put behind, but really not much of it's going to show because this is what's going to happen. But this is going to be white with molds and glaze, and it's just going to sit over it and it's going to be a wall art. How about that? It's something different. So. This is the kind of thing. What's, what's Joe? Joe's saying something. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Sweet tea. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's just going to be that way. Um, anyway, so let's get going. I don't want to bore you with too much of these details because I want to start these molds. And I thought, well, I could get it going, but I want you to see, like, from the get-go. Like, we are, like, no molds on this here fish at all. Hi, Debbie. All right, Debbie. Is Debbie's I see from Texas? Don't mess with Texas. Oh, don't mess with Texas, huh? All right, so I have, I pull it out of my bag. I always double wrap my, my um, an Orca Designs air dry clay. Best if you ask me, and I've tried them all, and I'm telling you not because I'm a stockist, but because it really is incredible. Once you try this, you'll never, I don't think you're gonna wanna go back to the other products. Um, it's got the perfect consistency. The shrinkage is so minimal on this. It doesn't wanna crack. It really doesn't. You just mold it together and you can see the difference. So anyways, enough of that. Um, any questions, you post them below as we're going along here. I am going to try, since I do have, um, shellac on here. I'm going to go ahead and try the regular old, um, I use the Aileen's uh, Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Um, and if you've watched us uh, last week, you'll know it's because, mainly because I know a lot of people like to um, use um, this tight bond it's for wood and, and, and uh, molding. Um, and that's all fine and dandy, but um, I can't it's hard for me to find here on the Cape. So that's, this has been working well for us so far. I haven't had any problems. Um, if I'm using, uh, typically on a lot of metals, if this was gonna get uh, tossed around a lot or whatever, get use, um, I would probably use an E6000. And then um, perhaps if it was a vertical surface or whatever, or on a, um, like we've done buckets with the molds, and I'll use the E6000 with that and use a little tape. Whenever you're using the mold, it's a good idea just to tap a little bit of cornstarch. Could be any brand. So I'm just taking the cornstarch and I'm gonna start with this piece. I kinda eyeballed some of this earlier today, not 100% because I was painting today. All right, I'm gonna tap off the excess. All right. And I'm gonna start working this into the mold. Oh, honey, I know what I forgot. No, I got it. I got them somewhere. Let's see. Where did I put my little... There we go. Also handy to have. These are just... Um, they're called uh, uh, blue steel uh, knives. For, they're like a, a hand trowel. Uh, you can use putty knives. Whatever works for you just to pull the, um, the clay um, even off the back. And with the uh, new design of the Iron Orchid Design molds, boy, they pop out so nicely. With they have the um, micro rim, which I'll show you I, um, in a second. So let me do it before I forget, because that will happen. I will forget. So there's this little raised edge, the micro rim, 
And that, for some reason, adding that little rim when you're pulling uh, the clay uh, with your knife, it, it really is so much easier. It, it resists like pulling out. If you do it in like small little sections at a time like such, and just keep moving it, and moving it. Okay. So I think I got off subject again. I was starting to say, go shopping through your house. How many people have things in their house that they just don't know what they want to do with, but they think, you know, you know, it's nice enough. Hate to throw it out. Maybe something like this is something you could do. Get creative. Think outside the box. I love doing this. Sometimes I'm waiting for something to dry and I just go walking through the store and find myself a project. Could be my attic. Could be my basement. Could be my, my tchotchke shelf. Who knows? All right, so I think I wanna maybe put this in here. We'll lay a few of them out, but I could, I could glue this right away. But let's lay a few out and get a, get a game plan. Oh, and when I was looking at things, I thought that, that this is from Classic Elements. One of the, I think it was last fall, um, release molds. And then I'm using one of the new, this year's um, Forget-Me-Nots. Believe it or not, I'm gonna, you know, thinking outside the box, I'm gonna just, we're gonna have some flowers on this here fish. So I was thinking maybe, kind of maybe decreasing water here. Let's try it. If we don't like it, that's okay. We could put something else. Sent over. What was that? Got to get that photo sent over. Uh-oh. No which photo? Oh. There's no icon on the... On the comments? Page. Okay. Um, I'll post when I can. Um, I can post it to your page. I just don't know how to get it. Yeah. If anything, if we can't get the um, photo posted of what these all started out as, um, you could actually go to our page. Um, we have this little shop. It's called Seaporium. Um, it's on Cape Cod, as I've said, and um, I did post, you know, you know, watch IOD TV tonight, and I put a, put a picture of our before in the comments. So if you just Facebook slash C poem if you get a chance. Because um, I can't tell about the comments because, you know, when you're doing the filming, the comments become very... Um, Obscure, like I can see some of you, but I, it's limited. So I'm thinking, boom, 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 right? Why not flowers on a fish? Fish can like spring too. Spring's coming in my book. We're past the hump at this point on Cape Cod. We gotta look forward to spring. It's spring. It's spring out there today, I'll tell you. And you could tell there's something in the air. People are walking around Main Street today. It was really nice. Like shopping at our house a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> Joe sometimes just I can I can see him his gears moving. He'll come in and he just starts moseying around the store, and he's just got this this way about him. <laughs> And I said, "Oh boy, he must found us. He must found a need for something, and he's looking to fill it, fill a spot with something. He did maybe some rearranging at the house. Usually before company comes, he gets you know maybe he wants to spruce up a room a little bit. All right, let's see if we can't fit this. I'd like to do three. So we know what we'll do. I'm gonna chop off the tip of this, and we'll have room for three flowers." And I'm not gonna get rid of this little tip. We can use that somewhere else. There, huh? Okay, maybe we can put that in there. And then where's my little classic element? So who is apprehensive about working with molds? What was it James? Is talking about working with the molds? Got any questions? 
Suck it to me. Hey, Patricia. Another Michigander. Whoop, whoop. Is everyone hearing us okay? Is it all coming through? No delays or anything? Let us know. There's a little delay. There's a little delay, okay. Let's see. So now I cut that little end off, so I want to make it even on this side. So that's what I'm doing. Just gonna make this a little pointier. You don't have to have it perfect sometimes. You can mold it a little bit the way you need to. There we go. So who's over the uh, trauma of Thursday with all the retired transfers? Oh my goodness. And I and I was actually thinking about putting the Bohemia um, transfer. I had one left, and I was going to put them on here, and, and maybe with the molds or whatever. And I sold it this afternoon. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, thanks, ladies. Sound is good. Um, so now I have some of these um, older, the more vintage molds as well from Iron Orchid Design, and. Let's try, I think these had a nice fit around the other part of the tail. Let's get these out of the way. Can you see everything? I hope you guys can see everything, guys and gals. Any questions, Joe? Nothing. No one's got questions? James doesn't have a question about the molds? Don't be afraid to ask any questions. If you have any questions or comments or something you want to add to the narrative, go right ahead. That's what they're all about here is learning. We learn from each other. If you have a question, a lot of times someone else does too. in this bar. I just keep pressing, it'll all seam back together there. Okay. Sometimes I do press the, the putty knife this way to kind of give it a quick skim and then I do like a back press. Does that make any sense? Especially with these ones that don't have the, the micro rim. Um, I find sometimes skimming the back, if you have a, a sharp enough, thin enough um, putty knife, uh, that seems to help. Whenever I want to leave the, the, the mold a little wet, I should be covering this, by the way, with like just a damp towel. It's not wet, it's just damp. And you don't want like the damp towel sitting on it when it's in storage. All right, so I think I had, is it like this? And I think, no. And then, let's see, I can use, I have this little tool, I showed this last week. Love this thing, I broke the one end of it. I don't know, heavy handed I guess, but that's nice for just real pinpoint touch. And then um, this nice piece. Nice flat kind of hockey stick into it. Um, I don't I don't have any idea where I got it, and no, Joe, it isn't from the dentist. <laughs> I'm just gonna trim this out so I can mold this better and bend it. Um, I think it was uh, Debbie's Design Diary did the um, the seahorse. I had done the whale all with the molds. This is the same idea. You form your shape, making a puzzle of the molds. There. So, now I have a little more flexibility to curl it, open it up. I might 
do that. And then we can put a little, a little piece in there maybe. What do you think? I think that'll work. Yeah, shopping in the shop. I love that part. Sometimes you just get a minute, you just want to do something. It really didn't take me much time other than I changed my mind on the, the velvet and had to tear it off of the frame. Other than that, no problems. All right, get our cornstarch. And is that, oh, now I gotta figure out, okay, yeah, now this one, the opposite. Cornstarch, tapping it into the mold. I'm using the Iron Orchid Design air dry clay. Anyone just coming in late? Thank you, thank you. Sometimes I, I have stuff in my head, Suzanne, and it makes sense to me, but I don't realize is like maybe my brain has gone way ahead of the game. <laughs> and I leave people scratching their heads. <laughs> Who else can sympathize with that? I find a lot of us creatives work the same way. <laughs> I like to say, you know, we have this shop on Main Street, it's a one way. And my creatives are the ones, you know, they're leaving their bags behind because we've been in about 20 different subjects in a matter of 10 minutes. And we're just in the moment and they'll like leave a bag and go out and maybe drive the wrong way down Main Street. That's that's my typical gal coming We have a lot of lost and found here. <laughs> we got a lot of lost and found. And I have, you know, chased people out trying to catch them before they take off and oh dear Lord. I got a shopping bag <laughs> in the back and I have tried, I've tried reaching her on Facebook because I know who she is. I just don't have her contact information. And she obviously them. isn't on Facebook anymore. I feel so bad. Here. Oh, gosh. People leave their deposits here. Yeah. Can you believe it? No, I believe it. We're and living then, it. And then some of our vendors come in and they leave their, their goods here. Yeah. <laughs> a day in the life. A day in the life. Who can sympathize with it? Who can sympathize? I think we're, all our brains work that way if you're creative. And a lot of times I find it's the woman that's the creative, but I had a couple, well, a couple months back where it was the husband and they couldn't understand. And I was like, no, that's just, you know, the creative brain. It's just, we roll on a different pace. That's it, don't feel bad. All right, so we're gonna, again, cut this part out. And I'm just using this little tool. I have no idea where I got it again. And it's not a dentist tool. All right. And again, if you're interested in any of the products, I have a link in the description to uh, find your local stockist. And Feel free to go there, find one that's near you. And if not, there's others. There's a, you go up into the menu, find the stockist, um, find a retailer, I think, in the menu, and then click on online. I have a link to brick and mortar stockist in the description. So Joe needs to turn the volume down. We wouldn't be a night without that happening. It's becoming a thing. Okay. I think we're just gonna undo that there. Kind of like in this. It's fitting well. Now won't this be really, really, really cute? What's up? I, wanna, I, I, I can't wait. I want to get a sneaky peek. All right, a sneaky peek so far, right? It'll be all white on this background. It's going to be fun. Oh, right, there we go. Ha! Something different. 
a lot better than it used to be, I think. Hopefully, we'll find out when it's all said and done. If not, it's just paint. <laughs> we can paint it into something else. But I think this fish is gonna be stuck with the molds, and that's okay, that'll be really cool. And let's see, let's add, hmm. Push a little bit closer to the camera. A little bit closer. Okay. Let's see. We can actually go really close if you'd like. And sorry, I hope this doesn't like jump down. I'm gonna just try to bring you a little closer. From Greece, is that is that my am, am I reading that right? You are. Oh, wow. Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in. Katarina. Nice. Is that better? Can we see better now? Katarina, we're working with stuff that we just found around. I mean, if you went shopping in your basement or your attic, maybe your own shelves, right? We have this, it was on a, a, on a stand. Uh, broke the stand off right there. Wasn't easy, but we got it done. You know what it's like if you got it in your head and you're gonna get it done. That's how we roll. And we had this lovely frame. I tore out the um, the velvet inset, sanded it, painted it, and we're gonna put this in the back. I've cut out the piece of thin plywood, the Luan, and just gave it a wash of color. You could do that, oh, you know what would be really cool for that back piece on something like that is um, uh, um, 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 I think it's even better the epoxy, the, the resins, right? And then do that pour and, and, oh, that would be gorgeous. So that will set on there like that and this will be white with a glaze. It'll just pop off of the blues and the aquas. It's not in line. Okay, how's that? better. He's happy. Okay. We're all happy. Joe's happy. We're all happy. Yeah. All right. Let's find, um, what do you think here? I wonder if we can use this in classic elements to and, oh, and just by the way, like, if you're ever doing a whale, folks, like, it, that is the spout right there. That's the blow. <laughs> Coming right off the top of the whale. <laughs> That's all I see when I see that piece of the mold. 30 minutes. Just. Wow, we were already 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Wow. How did that happen? We were two minutes late, so 28 minutes technically. Okay, okay but still. And again, we're using the Iron Orchid design, the air dry clay. And whenever we're working with this, I'm sure it's backwards for you because I have the camera facing forward. I like to just kind of keep a damp towel over it, um, just so, it, not touching it so it's getting all soggy, but just so it keeps the moisture there. And I'm just gonna work it and if you ever ever use like the other air dry, you know, paper clays, like you're working this point and it's like getting crusty and wanting to come apart. I mean, this is so much better. It really is that, like I said, I'm not speaking just because I'm a stockist. It really is that good. And I've done a video, it's on our YouTube, um, where I do the comparison and you can see it. It's crazy good. All right, so I'm just pressing this into the mold is to get it going, and it looks like we're gonna have to use more. Okay, just working it in. Let's see if we can't get this to work for us. All right, well, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more. Okay. Now I was thinking, I'm just going to add maybe a couple stamps. It's bothering me. I think I want to tie a little bit of the gold as I'm sitting here pressing the molds. I want to tie a little bit of the gold onto the background of 
this whole wall art thing that this has become. So let me get this mold and find it a spot. I'll start gluing this down after the video's done. I'm just gonna use this. I'll show you one piece and then you, you'll get the hint of how the rest of it goes. Um, and then with the iron orchid and any paper clays, um, you can, these are not, these are obviously still wet and it's actually a good idea to um, paint them up while they're still wet. Glue them down, paint them. Um, it helps with the shrinkage, it helps keep them flat. Um, you know, you can let it kind of set for 30 minutes or so so they get a little crust on them before you paint them, but that's really what you want to do. Um, it, I know it's a little scary, but um, if you don't, you know, heavy hand the paint on there with a heavy duty bristle brush, um, it's not going to be a problem for you. Okay. Just pressing down because we did a little adding of the clay in here. Just pressing it down and pressing it down. And those micro rims are really doing their job. It's not pulling out of the mold. And we're going to pop it out. Let gravity do the work for us if we can. It doesn't stretch the clay out as much. So I'm thinking I might do something like this around the eye and then that can kind of go there. This I might cut and stretch it around. But that's an idea of how we're going to roll with this, I think. Um, I want to show you gluing this down and then I'm going to try and get a quick stamp in before we have to go. All right, let's see. There. And then press in that edge and we'll just do something like that. Cool, cool. All right, so let's move on. Let's do a quick little stamp here. Why not? It's bothering me. I think I want to tie in some gold. Oh, we're going to do glue. Sorry, there's my brain working again. We're not working. However, that works. Okay, I'm using this Aileen's again. Um, you can use, I like the, um, the tight bond. Everyone has a lot of luck with the tight bond for um, wood and molding. But whatever you're using for this kind of a, um, a surface, um, as long as it's a, a quick grab, tacky, you don't want a lot on there. The biggest problem I think people have is putting too much on. I don't know if you can see that. And then I always store these upside down. If I lose a little glue in there in the time I'm working with it, that's okay. Um, I'd rather have that than wait for that um, thick glue to make its way all the way back down um, to the tip again. Okay. Or I can always snap the tip on and put it back in its can. All right. Now I'm taking a little coffee stick. Pop, it could be a popsicle stick, whatever. I know one of you gals likes to just go for it and use your fingers. Spread it out nice and thin. Go all the way to the edges. And then just go ahead and glue it down. Now, here's another thing that I find is very helpful. When you're gluing these down to help with the shrinkage, whether it's the, this clay or another clay, push it without distorting it too much. Just try to give it inward pressure. Press it down all the way around. And before I leave tonight, I'll just keep pressing these down while they're gluing. Um, and then come back tomorrow and it's actually gonna be pretty darn good. Any lift you, or any cracks that bother you, you can always take like a little piece of, uh, of the, the clay in the morning or whatever. Yeah, even if you've painted it, you can just do little touch-ups. And you can just kind of fit it in where the crack is. With the, you know, you put a little glue in there, just rub in a little more of the clay. And do your, your quick fix with your paint and you're good to go. All right. So that's how that's gonna work. 
I'm gonna finish gluing this and finish this up at, uh, later, uh, but I wanna get to a stamp. Why not? We don't like anything too boring. We don't have a lot of room, like I said, because we have this frame. It's gonna go in here, and then this is going on top. I'm gonna show you again. This will be white. It's gonna really pop off of there and probably put like an aqua or blue glaze in the fish. So, and I actually might glaze um, the frame with a little black on the details just to kind of let it pop a little bit more, give it a little more depth. Um, but we're gonna move this aside for our stamp. So obviously we have the frond stamp, which is really kind of perfect for this. Oh, you know what, Joe? Fronds? Yeah, fronds. <laughs> See, we don't need the frame now, actually. We need the back. Okay. And again, this is just a thin piece of Luan. I cut to fit the frame. And I'll just take some nails, brads after. I could actually put a little thin piece of glue. And that would actually probably be enough. It was like a liquid nails. Did you hate that? Uh, yeah, huh? <laughs> and then um, maybe take some little brads and just in a couple spots, few spots, and help hold that down. Bend them back over the piece, if that makes any sense. Like, message me if that doesn't make any sense to you. Um, but, you know, some of these fronds look like they could be uh, seaweed. So I've cut, they're already cut from other projects. I've separated them, I should say. So I was thinking I might do like a little piece in here and then um, this one isn't cut yet. This is still from part of the sheet. Whenever you get the stamps, um, 38 minutes. before you take it apart, you want to sand it up and down side to side and that's it. Um, honey, do you have, can you get me the brayer set that's underneath the other cart? And I'm going to get a little puddle of gold paint going. I'm just using the Modern Masters tonight. What are the, the Olympic gold, I think it's called. The other cart there. See the box with the brayers? You're at 39 minutes. Okay, almost done, almost done. And I'll just be adding a little more of the um, fronds in the corner here. And that'll be it. Okay, so I have this little palette. I have my brayer, and I'm just gonna work. It's not a very even surface, so actually we're gonna take one of these plates that we use for class. Aha, much better. Because I just wanna add a little bit of the gold to kind of tie in the rest of the frame to the stamp. And working with the raised part up, and again, I've already seasoned the stamp. I've sanded the sheet before I cut them apart. And I'm just going to just let that paint sit on the tops of the stamp. And let's just see how this works. Oh, I don't even need to do the whole stamp, darn it. I'm worried about the time here. We're just going to set this down and we're going to not move it. We're going to commit to this. That's it. And then actually Joe's technique, he likes to take the brayer, you know, this is too small of a stamp to do that. Take the brayer over the stamp, give it even pressure. So we have just a little bit of that gold shining through and then we'll do probably one more strand and then I'll do a couple coming up the side here. That way we're tying in a little bit of that frame into the, the background and then that fish is gonna pop. That's that. All right. That is Wednesday Whimsy this week. Who knows what we're gonna do next week? Stay tuned. Make sure you're checking on IOD TV. We've got so many, when more and more gals coming on. Everyone is awesome. And any questions, you know, down below. Put down your questions, we'll answer them. We're gonna have some fun next week. All right, you take care. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye now. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye.